Overwatch 2 developer blog, tuning hero balance for launch. Okay, let's let's see this. Okay, let's read this. October 4th is on the horizon and the team has been hard at work preparing for the launch of Overwatch 2. Today's update, let's take some time to talk about the hero balance for the launch day and break down our philosophy and approach to balancing the game with our new seasonal model for Overwatch 2. Balancing with seasonal releases. Overwatch 2 brings with it a new nine week season. Isn't, uh, what's the current seasons now? Isn't it like 60 days? I think it's not that much of a change. Like eight weeks to nine weeks or some shit. Conti consistently introduce new maps, heroes, game modes, uh, and more players, and more for players to experience. Heroes, more specifically, our plan is to typically release a new hero every other season, which combined with our ongoing additions of new maps and game modes and our regular balance updates should reward different strategies and play styles, keeping the game fresh and dynamic, dynamic for years to come. Importantly, each new se uh, each season will see impactful hero balance changes as the season begins to support our goals of constantly balancing the game and keeping the live service feeling dynamic. Hey, wow. I like that. So there's going to be some uh, changes in the beginning of each season. Nice. Not every three years. I like it. This means new seasons will feel more distinct and special at balance changing significantly when we move to the next season. I almost lost myself. We are also prepared to make additional balance adjustments if a need within a season arises to manage hero balance and power and keep our game feeling fair and fun. Okay, season one preview. The second public beta brought with it an abundance of hero performance data. This, along with player feedback from the broader community and professional players, has been instrumental in defining the hero balance landscape at launch. Informed by this data and feedback, the hero design team has mapped out some balance updates that players from the beta will recognize as change from the end of our second public beta test earlier this year. It's 13 days, bro. I want to watch two now. Literally, you, 13 days. You, you, we could wait. You have an opportunity to see most of these changes in action first during the next Overwatch League tournament cycle, the Countdown Cup. I don't want to watch it. I'd rather play it, to be honest with you. Uh, starting our September 22nd, which is tomorrow. Uh, until then, let's dive into a preview of what to expect on October 4th, chat. You guys ready? Junker Queen. Thank God they're nerfing Junker Queen because I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think a tank, I, just me personally, I don't think a tank should have anti-healing. I think that should be, you know, a support thing that should be unique to support and not like given to any other role. But hey, you know what? That's just me. Uh, Junker Queen commanding shout. Allied health bonus reduced from 100 to 50 HP. Allied duration reduced from 5 to 3 seconds. And temporary health no longer decays over its duration. Wow, okay. Cooldown increased from 11 to 15 seconds, by the way. This is actually pretty good. Based on data and feedback received from beta testing and more recently from observing professional play, we, ob we believe the temporary health granted by Junker Queen's shout ability has been proven too strong overall and enabled a dominating team composition at the very upper ranks of play. Reducing the health gain and duration while increasing the ability's cooldown are intended to reduce the overall power of this ability and make sure it's more deliberate and less forgiving. Okay. This is so weird. Why do they put General down here, but then put Junker Queen up here? Wouldn't you want to put Junker Queen with the tanks and put General for... I mean, anyways. General. Temporary health now grants 50% reduced ultimate charge instead of zero ultimate charge. Interesting. I like that. Because if you think about it, you are losing one tank on the field. That's one less 600 HP target. That that means less ults. There's going to be less damage and less healing done in a, overall in a game. You're not going to see those crazy, you know, 20, 30k damage games anymore. You might see 20k damage games, but they're going to be more rare, I feel. So that means there's going to be less ult charge to, you know, to do. And that means there's going to be less ults used in the game. So that means you're going to be, ha you're going to have to use ults smarter and not just waste them because they're going to be more impactful. So this Temporary health now grants 50% reduced ultimate charge instead of zero is actually pretty cool. That means there's going to be a little bit more uh, ult charge. I like that change. Temporary health not giving ultimate charge added a lot of hidden strength to its effect. Reducing consequences for riskier decisions and play styles. This is particularly, particularly effective in instances where you can grant temporary health to other players. For the players... Dolt? I've never... For the players doling out the damage 
Uh, doing significant damage but gaining no ultimate charge can particularly frustrating and unrewarding. Thank you! I've been saying that about stupid ass fucking Wrecking Ball since he came out! Wrecking Ball is a shit character! Delete him from the game! Okay, anyways, with this change, our goal is to preserve some of the advantages granted by temporary health while adding a reward for players who contribute to their teams through damage dealt. Oh, this is what you guys were talking about. Damage roll passive. New passive. Eliminations grant 25% increased reload and movement speed for 2.5 seconds. Does not stack with itself, but will refresh the duration. That's so weird. I don't like that. As a DPS player, I don't like that. That's just weird. I, I don't like that. That's, I don't, as a DPS player, I don't like that. I, th I think the 25% increased reload would be good for Ash. Okay, anyways. All heroes now refund up to 30% ultimate power on a hero swap. I like that for all the heroes, but I don't like the damage passive, the ro damage roll passive. I don't like that. And also, what happens to the characters that don't reload? Like Hanzo. Hanzo doesn't reload. Up a upon announcing the change for 30% ultimate power to transfer when swapping DPS heroes, we saw a lot of feedback asking why that wasn't a broader change for all heroes. After continued testing, we agree and we are making a change so the entire roster should have access to this as we launch. That's pretty cool. Um, of course, that means the DPS role once again finds itself without a role passive. So along this change, we're introducing a new passive to DPS that increases their movement speed and reload by 25% for a brief window after getting an elimination. We believe that this change is the right balance of rewarding players who perform well in the damage role without being overpowered. Uh, however, in the future seasons, we may continue to experiment with these passives do as we look to shake things up up the meta regularly holy shit base health increased from 200 to 275 base armor increased from 200 to 275 so she has a she has an extra 50 overall energy javelin cooldown reduced from eight to six seconds well someone said earlier the reload speed i agree with but the 25 percent movement speed is not yeah i don't like the 25 percent movement speed i don't know i think they change i hope they change that for a hero rework that's been uh what do you call it i'm not gonna read all that shit Diva. Diva uh, boosters impact damage. Uh, if I read all those, this is going to take way too long. Boosters impact damage increase from 10 to 25. What? Micro missiles cool down from 8 to 7. And call mech ultimate reduced cost uh, uh, by 12%. Okay. Brig. Inspire duration reduced from 6 to 5 seconds. Baptiste. Biotic launcher primary fire damage increased from 24 to 25. Oh, God, dude. Why are they making him even... <laughs> Why are they making Baptiste do more damage, bro? No! Baptiste players are... Your supports should support, not be DPS characters, dude. Biotic launcher primary fire minimum falloff range reduced... Uh, increased, sorry, from 20 to 25 meters. Dude, mercy. Pressing crouch during Guardian Angel now launches you straight up. Because apparently doing the mercy tech was too hard. Sorry. Angelic, uh, angelic Descent can now be activated by holding Crouch while airborne. Bastion, Ironclad Passive is enabled again, 20% reduction while transformed. Okay, wow, they actually they actually brought back Ironclad Passive, wow. Uh, because of console, they said it was unfair. Who cares if console players think it's unfair? You're on console! Just, just get a PC, what? Uh, Reaper. Hellfire shotgun spread reduced from 8 to 7 degrees. Oh, man, thank God, because Reaper was actually shit in the beta. Reaper's spread on the beta was actually so disgustingly, like, terrible. That, that was bad. Sojourn. Railgun energy gained from non-player targets, barriers, turrets, etc. reduced by an additional 50%. So wasn't it that Sojourn got 5 energy per hit player hit, but 2.5 every shield that they hit? So if they reduce it by additional 50%, that's going to be like 1.25, right? I think that's... I, I, you know what? I think that's... So yeah, Sojourn, I think, was a little busted. I think I think that's good. I think that's good. I, I actually think that's good. Sombra, hack ability lockout duration increased from 1 to 1.75 ah, seconds. They actually gave Sombra a hack buff. Now, I wonder if that hack buff is actually like to EMP as well. The duration of Hack's ability lockout often goes unnoticed, unless it's being used as an, an active interrupt. While we're not looking to go back to previous lockout numbers, we do want Sombra to have a slightly more time to feel 
uh, as though the ability is effective. This change stays in line with our goals for less crowd control abilities in Overwatch 2 and will continue to closely monitor the performance data and player feedback to ensure this remains the case. If you guys want to read these, uh, what the, the developer thing people said, uh, you can. I really just, I wanted to get through it. That's actually really interesting. The damage rule passive. New passive for DPS players. Eliminations grant 25% increased reload. I think that is so... F I, I think that's good. But the movement speed for 2.5 seconds as well? I think... I think this is good. Because if I get a kill on Ash and it takes me 10 bullets, I want to re... I, I don't want to sit there for 14 minutes reloading. I want to be able to reload fast. And if you get a kill, like 2.5 seconds of reloading, you're going to reload 25% faster. That's good. But the, I don't like the movement speed. Like, imagine if Genji or Tracer gets a kill. Oh my god, imagine if Tracer gets a kill! She's going to be running faster and on top of that, reloading faster? Imagine chain kills, bro. You're going to be like, yeah, fucking Sonic out there. Nano nano blade, you, you don't have to reload on blade, but like you do move 25% faster if you get a kill with nano blade. Holy shit. What about Kiriko? Kiriko is a support. This is damage roll passive. And, oh yeah, they also said that doesn't stack. Does not stack with itself, but refresh the duration. Wait, does not stack with itself. No, I'm pretty sure they said does not stack with itself. It stacks with other speed boosts. I'm trying to, I'm pretty sure what they say with does not stack with itself is that if you kill if you get a kill and then you kill another person right away, it's not going to be 50% reload and 50% movement speed because it stacks. It just resets the timer. So if you get if I get a kill, I get 25% and then I get another kill instead of the duration running out, it's just going to reset. I get another 2.5 seconds. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm just thinking realistic realistically. I've played Kiriko. I've seen what a nano boosted soldier does with Kiriko ult. Like, Kiriko makes you shoot faster, run faster, and, uh, you know, makes your abilities faster. But if you get nanoed as soldier and you visor, that's more damage and everything. And on top of that, if you get another, if you get a kill with the nano visor and you're in fucking Kiriko's ult, that means your reload is going to be 20. Ah! I'm actually scared. I really want to see this chat. I re oh my god. Oh my god. And speed boost. I don't think... I don't know if you can speed boost on top of... Bro, I can't wait for this. I can't wait, chat. I can't wait. Uh, this is going to be very interesting. Like, some of these changes, I actually don't fully agree with the damage roll passive. But I just can't wait until Overwatch 2 actually does drop. And we're going to experience all this for the... Like, it's it's going to it's gonna feel new. I'm, and that's what I... That's what I... I'm, that's what I'm longing for. I'm longing for the... Uh, I want the old feeling that I used to have, bro. Where when I used to get on Overwatch, it'd be a new update, or it would be like a, that first ever Christmas event, and I, and I, you know, I want and I wanted to play it. Not how it is now, where we get the same, you know, Junkenstein revenge for the fucking eighth year in the, in the, in a in a row, and then you know, yeah. Uh, this is gonna be really interesting, chat. I'm really, I really can't wait. I really can't wait.